about to uh, hear from a third generation oysterman over here at this end of the tent. Uh, those of you enjoying the fruits of uh, the shuckers labor down there uh, may be interested to know where oysters actually come from before they end up on your plate in the restaurant. And uh, we're very fortunate to have uh, Dudley Diddlecombe and his uh, uh, oyster operation that he's going to talk about. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to hand the microphone to Dudley and maybe Philip, his nephew, will, will jump in at some point. And they're going to talk about uh, the state of the oyster uh, in the Chesapeake Bay region and uh, how those oysters end up on your plate. So here is Dudley. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> uh, good afternoon. I'm Dudley Biddlecombe, and uh, my family has been involved in. Uh, well, my, my granddad and my daddy, we were. They called them oyster planters, and then they refer to us as oyster farmers. And I think right now we are oyster aquaculturists. <laughs> so we're making progress. But anyway. Uh, the family has been inv involved in uh, oyster production one way or the other for over a hundred years. So, anyway, I don't know how they all can see this, but here's a, a graph that starts back in 1880. And as you see as it goes along, it had its ups and downs. It had more downs than it had ups. And, uh, for instance, back in the 60s, we thought we were out of the oyster business. And then it came back for a while, and then uh, here, 15 years ago or so, we got to another low, and we needed to find out what was going on and how we could develop uh, young uh, seed oysters, but naturally we needed small oysters to grow a, a product that we could sell. So, uh, I don't know if many of you can see it, but on this shell, there might be at least 20, 20 young oysters. Uh, let's see, back in June, this year, it was nothing but an empty shell. You take a shell from a previous season and you put it in the water and the old traditional method was you just took hundreds or thousands of bushels of shells and you put them on the river or creek bottom and uh, we do this on leases that we get from the state. Uh, we get a 10 year lease and as long as we're active, they will renew our lease. The one that my brother and I work now has been in the family for over 90 years. So anyway, when you put these shells out probably in June, and the, uh, the oysters will spawn and create a larvae, and that larvae will float in the water column for about two weeks. Now, it just floats. It can move vertically, but not horizontally. It's not like a fish or some other. So it drifts with the tide. So uh, we put these shells in, and uh, nobody knows when this is going to happen. Uh, you can't even make a guess. I've asked several scientists, and uh, they get to that question. They say, you know, we really can't tell you. But anyway, the last two years, we've been very successful. We've gotten a very high, what we call strike, and we've got a lot of baby oysters, which we call spat. And uh, from that, let's say we'll grow an oyster market size, and it'll take three to five years to grow a market size oyster in our area. Uh, I have no idea how old this oyster is. It might be as old as I am, but I'm saying 10 to 12 years. They are the old timers when we thought years ago that we were out of the, out of the oyster business. There were still enough of these mamas and papas out there to bring it back. Now, uh, also, over the past, I don't know, maybe 30 or 40 years, there has been uh, uh, hybrid oysters, and this is an oyster that uh, they have spawned in operation and uh, creating the uh, <coughs> larvae is all controlled like laboratory conditions. And uh, they've worked on this thing and got it to that the, the average person, the layman, can do most of this themselves. And uh, 
this chart right here, I don't know if you see it now. What they do is they take the shells that we would just put on the bottom, and they put them in mesh bags, plastic mesh bags, stack them in this tank, fill the tank with water uh, from the river, and you want the temperature to be over 74 Fahrenheit. I don't understand the other scale. So anyway, they put uh, the oysters in the tank, and the water is circulated by compressed air. There's nothing coming in, nothing going out. They go to a hatchery or a laboratory, and they get this little wad of jelly-looking mud, and that is the larvae. And this one here is smaller than a golf ball, and it has approximately three million larvae. The reason for so many is, even in the wild, only about 12 or 15 percent of the larvae will survive. They're put in this tank for about three days. By the end of three days, the larvae have used up all the food supply, the plankton or algae or whatever they survive on and then they have to start bringing water in from the river. That's where their nourishment comes from. And they circulate water for the next maybe two or three weeks. And they get that oyster up to uh, maybe half as big as my little fingernail. And that kind of gives it a head start. And then those uh, bags of, of oysters with spat on them or baby oysters on them are taken out the tank, carried out in the river, and the bags are opened up and put on the bottom and they grow the old fashioned natural way. Also, you can take that same method and instead of the oyster catching on a shell, which as you see here, they catch in large clusters. And uh, you, you really don't, for instance right there, that oyster, those group of oysters are gonna be very slow growing. Not a very well formed oyster. So if you can get that larvae to catch on a tiny grain of crushed oyster shell, you can start over with, you get a single, an individual oyster, and it will grow very well shaped, nice shaped oyster, what we call a deep cup. These oysters do not reproduce. All the energy goes into growing, growing nice, plump, sweet oysters. And when they get approximately, say, this size, uh, around three inches, and you'll go down to the raw bar, and they will have these oysters there for you, and they'll let you have six on the half shell and a glass of wine, or maybe a imported beer for about eleven ninety-five. <laughs> and uh, don't laugh, there's a lot of labor involved in this operation. Those oysters, are, when they get time, started with those tiny oysters, they have to have a, a fine mash bag that they grow in. Otherwise, they'd drop through the one-inch mash of this large cage. They have to be taken out of the water every couple of weeks. The cage has to be cleaned. They have to go and uh, sort these oysters out according to size. And that can be done, since they're singles, that can be done by a machine. But, uh, this, this is, of course, the Cadillac. This is the high-end, the product, and uh, where the, the clusters of oysters like this, uh, they are for the shucking house, and when you go to the supermarket and buy oysters, buy a half pint, pint, quart, or whatever, that's the product you will get. So between the, the natural method of raising oysters, which I really feel like is making a big recovery, and one reason is water quality. The water quality has, has really improved, I say, in the last 15 years. One reason is that everyone, you and everyone else, is more conscious of what is necessary to keep our roads and bays clean. And uh, I thank you very much because that's part of my livelihood. <laughs> and uh, anyway, between the natural uh, method of raising oysters and this new technology for the hybrid oysters, I think we're going to get back to a very healthy uh, oyster business, which is good. More oysters you get in the water, they filter, they improve water quality. And 
the more oysters we raise, the better the water quality, the better water quality. We'll have, you know, more areas that are uh, so adaptable for raising oysters. So it's good for the ecology, it's good for the economy, and the oysters are good to eat. And I thank you for listening to my little presentation. And all I can say is eat more oysters. Thank you. And I should also point out that at 3.15 over in the tent, the folk life tent, there's going to be a big shucking showdown between